Hi guys, welcome to this video. Uh, this is a video for Shadow War Armageddon. It's a new game that came out. Um, the box set came out quite a while ago. Um, but this is the rulebook that was released this weekend. And basically I was going to do a slight impressions kind of video on what I think about it. Um, is it a good system to play? And also I was going to offer some tactics for Sisters of Battle. Um, so for those who are new to the hobby or have not played one of the other uh, skirmish systems before in the 40k, such as this one, uh, Necromunda, uh, this is the Necromunda re-release, but it's essentially exactly the same as the original, and uh, you can see all the gangs and things in there. Um, yeah, it's basically the exact same rule system, and by exact same I mean copy-paste, so this is just about the same as the original. Um, there's a couple of rules that don't exist in this book that existed in the original, which are things like the catching fire rules, um, and they changed how sustained fire works because they didn't produce the right dice anymore. Um, so they did that, and basically Shadow War Armageddon is a copy-paste of Necromunda, this version of Necromunda, in, in that it doesn't have the catching fire. Uh, the sustained fire works the same as this one. So it's literally copy paste for the most part. Um, what is different is obviously the setting itself. So obviously Shadow War Armageddon takes place uh, on the kind of larger scale of the galaxy in that um, you have all the different factions. So you've got orcs, you've got space marines, um, you've got Astra Militarum, and you've got like the Sister Battle, uh, Chaos, Space Marines, etc, etc. I mean, all of these kill team rules are available uh, for download on the Games Workshop website, so that is good. Um, it means you can just go on there and get the ones you want. However, without access to the actual rulebook, you might struggle because it has a lot of uh, equipment profiles, uh, you know, gun profiles and things that aren't actually in all of the kill team sheets, uh, Sisters of Battle especially, so you would actually need the full rule book to uh, get the most of that, which is a little bit of a shame, but you know, um, because of the price of this rule book, um, it's £25 from Games Workshop themselves, I paid 20 uh, at my local store, um, I think £20 is about worth it, especially if you haven't got Necromunda or Gorkamorka before. Um, Gorkamorka is again the same game, it was released after the original version of Necromunda and uh, that just focuses on orcs and it's a bit like Mad Max with vehicles and things so it's actually really cool, very very crazy. Um, so what I'm going to do is talk about the differences between Necromunda, Gorkamorka and Shadow War first. So I'm just going to go over what they are. So um, first off Necromunda is about your gangs, so um, you pick a gang and they're more or less the same. In the original Necromunda there was nothing to differentiate the gangs. In Necromunda Underhive, which is this version, um, they actually did different skill types uh, here. For So it's the same as Armageddon. Um, so you've got your different gangs. So you've got Cordor, you've got Escher, you've got Delac, you've got Goliath, Orlocks, Bansar. And that's the basic gangs, okay? Um, and then you've got the skill trees they can take from. Um, and there's the skills here. This is all the skills, and there's more on the other pages. Um, but they also had different starting equipments they could take. So for instance, um, if I can never find it, Escher, here we are. Um, so here's the different weapons. Escher, for instance, could take swords on pretty much anyone to begin with, whereas the other people couldn't, and they had access to different specials and heavy weapons, like the plasma guns and things, and um, only like Van Saar had another heavy plasma gun to begin with. Um, as you went to the shops and things after missions, you could just get the other ones you actually wanted. So you could just buy these things if you had the credits and things, but you couldn't start with them and that was kind of crucial. So that was really the only thing that differentiated them and it didn't have those restrictions in the original. Um, they also released expansions and things which added more factions that worked differently. But uh, yeah, the, that was basically it for the most part. Um, other than that, 
all of the weapon rules, as I mentioned, are pretty much the same. For the most part, though, uh, gangers, as they're called in Necromunda, um, they don't have armor. They don't, you know, they're not very good shots. They're not very good fighters in general. But it was balanced because they were all similar. Okay, uh, that's very different in Shadow War, and that's because in Shadow War. Um, there's, it's full of trained soldiers, you know? I mean, okay, there are the mooks, there's the Chaos Cultists and that kind of thing, but even the Chaos Cultist is actually quite well statted by uh, Necromunda standards. So, if you took the, the kill teams from Shadow War and put them in a Necromunda Underhive, the gangers would get slaughtered. So, it's kind of different. It plays different because of that way. Um, but otherwise, the rules are the same. Uh, the only thing different is the campaign settings. Uh, not setting, sorry, so the campaign rules. So, uh, Necromunda is a lot more in-depth on its uh, campaign rules than Shadow War. Uh, for instance, here is the Serious Injuries chart. Works exactly the same as before, so if you need to take a Serious Injury, uh, you roll on this chart. And it's a D66 instead of just a D6. Uh, there's a good chance you die if you roll a 1 as your 10. Um, but there's also way more stuff that could happen to kind of define your character. And on top of that you actually had an experience point system uh, and you'd get different things depending on if you won or lost, you get different bonuses and you'd earn credits instead of this Promethean cash. So it was a lot more um, numbery, um, you know, there's different resources you had to manage. In Shadow War you have your Promethean tanks and they've basically completely simplified the system, but I'll go over that in a bit. Um, but in this, yes, uh, so here you have your experience advance table where they start off as like gangers or jubes even and as they level up they pass these ranks they get an advance for each one. An advance table is you roll 2d6 and you take what you well you take what you get and you might roll again for a stat increase etc etc. Uh, it could be a skill table and then you'd roll on the skill table. So exactly the same except that you had stat increases here and you didn't choose you rolled for it so it's a lot more random. On top of that, they had a maximum characteristic increase. So in Shadow War, um, a particular model in this game, uh, a particular model can only upgrade each stat once. So what that means is um, you can only like get a plus one ballistic skill once, and that kind of thing. Um, in the original Necromunda, you actually had a maximum value, which here is ballistic skill six. So um, this was your cap, and a fighter couldn't go boot above that, but they could get to that point, at least. So, uh, interestingly, the uh, Necromund gangers could end up with better stats, potentially, than all of the Shadow War things, but it would take a lot to get there, and you'd have to be quite lucky to have her model survive that long without any drawbacks. Um, but yeah, and they'd pick up the skills and everything, and you could equip them, as usual. There's all sorts of other things that could happen. Uh, the other thing that was cool was Territory, uh, so your gangs would have territory, and depending on who was alive, they would work it for credits at the end, and that was how you bought most of your stuff. And this is the territory table, it's literally just all sorts of stuff you could have, and they all had different effects. Some were dangerous to work, like the chem pit. Uh, some were really good, and you'd get free gangers and all this kind of thing, or extra money, or people healing you. So, and then there's the training post and everything. So as you can see, it was way, way more in-depth. Uh, the missions... Well, there were specialists you could hire, but they were universal, so there was Ratskin Scouts who did special things, Bounty Hunters, exactly the same as specialists in Shadow War, but again, universal for each game. And then you had all the fluff, um, so campaign scenarios, blah blah blah. So yeah, the missions are basically the exact same as Shadow War. Again, it's a copy-paste for the most part. Um, and there you go. So, that's Necromunda in a nutshell. Okay. Um, Brief talk about Gorkamorka. So Gorkamorka, um, that had it was the same game except it had orcs, so they had different stats. You had Gretchen in it as well. Uh, there's a few more restrictions on building your gang because of the way it worked, but um, mainly the the key thing was you could have vehicles, so you could have trucks, you could have uh, tracks, which obviously tracked vehicles, and you can have bikes. And uh, yeah, you could use them. Uh, it was a lot more Mad Maxi and stuff. Uh, in that game, because orcs were not so good at shooting, and because orcs could not be pinned in Gorkamorka, uh, Gretchen could, and so could the Digonobs, which were humans that lived there. Um, 
and wanted to be orcs, but uh, because orcs couldn't be pinned, it kind of changed the effectiveness. So ranged weapons really weren't that good, and it was kind of more about close combat. But a lot of crazy stuff happens in Gork and Walker. Um, so it's a bit mental. The other thing about Gork and Walker that was different is they changed the flesh wounds. So a flesh wound was on a 1 or a 2, whereas in Necromunda and Shadow War, it's on a 1. So you're actually less likely to go down in, a, in an actual brawl compared to usual. So that was good. So uh, that's those two covered. So now let's actually get onto Shadow War Armageddon. So as I've said, um, it is essentially exactly the same game. Um, copy paste in terms of the rules. Um, the only, like you got the high impact rules, multiple wounds, pin fighters. You get pinned as usual. Uh, I'm not going to go into what the rules are because um, you know I don't want to break any copyright things, but. Basically, it's a very good system, and it's been going for a very long time in various forms. Uh, I say various forms, but it's pretty much exactly the same. Um, so, if you haven't played it, and you fancy playing a small skirmish type game, I would highly recommend it. Um, I would say it's really fun to play, and actually Shadow War Armageddon, because it's quite simplified, especially with the campaign rules, um, I'd say it's a good place to start, and you can use your existing 40k model collections, or maybe branch out, get a small kill team of a faction you've kind of liked but didn't want to collect a whole army. For instance, it could be orcs. Uh, I can actually use my Gorkamorka orcs for this, which is kind of funny, so I, I, immediately out the gate I've got a kill team for orcs. Um, I wouldn't be able to use my vehicles, but, you know, that's fine. Um, I do look like this terrain. It is really nice terrain. Um, yeah, but uh, again, Space Marines, you know, and the other good thing about uh, games like this is uh, if, you, if you're like me and you struggle to find motivation to paint like vast armies, especially infantry, like scouts, if you're, if you're collecting Space Marines and you've got scouts to paint, it's, it's kind of a chore, you know, you want to get onto the cool big stuff, or at least I do. Um, you know, the, the small infantry gets a bit dull after a while, but if you're painting up a new kill team, you know, it's a bit more inspiration. It's like, what, five models? You can paint that up fairly quickly, you know, do it in a week or something, and there you go, that you've got that kill team, and you can use them in your regular games too, so, you know, it's pretty good. Um, but yeah, I would, I would recommend playing it, because it is a very fun game. Um, but to talk about the differences, so, Shadow War, and Necromunda and Gorkamorka, but mainly Shadow War at this moment, um, they are designed to be played for campaigns. So it's not supposed to be like a one-off pickup game. And you can do that if you want, but you're kind of missing out on the real the real fun parts. So uh, campaigns are good because uh, they allow you to level up your characters, so your characters get better as they go on. Um, you can equip them differently, and you can just improve your uh, models and units. The models, yeah. Um, you know, they they get stronger as they go on, and you can compete against the others. And there you go. Now, in uh, Shadow War, you collect things called Promethean Cash or Promethean Barrels, and the idea is the first person to get to fifteen in a campaign, like fifteen Promethean, it was a stockpile. Uh, wins the campaign, which is actually very quick compared to the old Necromunda rules and Gorkamorka. In fact, um, they've made it a lot faster. Um, everyone who takes part in a fight gets one Prometheum cash per game, so um, you know it's fairly easy. If you win, you get D3, and there's ways to get extra ones like taking out specialists, or you, sometimes you can re-roll that D3 depending on what's going on, that kind of thing. Um, for instance, this Hunt in the Prometheum Sprawl adds random effects to each mission. And for instance, Vital Mission lets you re-roll the, the um, dice to determine how many caches you receive. And if both people get that, then the, automatically the winner gets free Prometheum caches. So, you know, um, you can actually get quite a lot of Prometheum very, very quickly. And we've seen that happen. Um, so it's interesting in that sense. Uh, now, here's the serious injury table in this, and as you can see, it's a lot smaller than the last one. Uh, this is D6, and basically a 1 is still bad, but it's a 50-50 whether they get captured or they die. 
Um, so it's much harder to die, and I'm kind of okay with that one. But then you get the head wound, and that's simplified as well. You just get frenzy. Before it was an option of frenzy or stupid. Um, and it's a much higher percentage of getting that. And what this basically means is a lot of people are going to end up with frenzy. If you've got the same group, and they don't die or get captured or whatever, um, chances are they're all going to end up with frenzy before you know it, which is a bit daft, but, you know. Um, so... Again, it's kind of focused towards the smaller, quicker campaigns, you know. Uh, painful recovery, uh, fight against hatred for a fighter, um, puts some out of action. So again, same, good, very good odds of getting hatred as well. Uh, full recovery, yeah, decent, and then an advance, which is nice. Um, advance, here's the advance table, so it's exactly the same as before with the levelling up. Uh, but now, uh, it's TD6, and if you roll low, this is kind of the opposite, because before it used to be the skills on the harder things to get, um, and you'd generate randomly. Uh, now, it's the stats which are harder to get, which is interesting. Um, however, you get to choose, you don't have to roll. Whereas before you used to roll a d6 and say it was toughness or wound, you, that would determine what your character gets. Here you just choose which one you want. Go for toughness, by the way. Um, but, you know... Uh, so there's, there's that, and again, they can only go up by one at a time. Uh, but most of the time, you're going to get to generate a skill. So, you know, and then there's the same skill table. So as you can see, it's, a, it's literally the same game, and you could easily port them across. Um, you'd need to deal with the points costs a little bit, because, as I said before, the Shadow War guys would probably whoop the, whoop the uh, poor gangers. But, you know... Um, so you'd probably have to change the points. But uh, here's the skills. Okay, so the skills now are different as well. So as before, you'd pick a skill table, just like now, uh, if that character can take it, and you'd roll a d6, and that would be the skill you'd get on that table. Now you get to roll 2d6 and take the one you prefer. So you have way more options, and as I said, you're going to get way more skills than before. Um, it's interesting because that's actually going to make the game overall slightly more complicated for the individual models. You can have a lot of little side notes for your models as they get more and more skills, which I think is a strange way of doing it, but it gives them more character when there's less like customization options at least, and there is a much less customization options in this than there was in the other ones. So you've got your special operatives, and as I mentioned before, these are uh, unique to the factions. So this is the Space Marine Warns, Apothecary, Veteran, Terminator, Death Watch. And you can pay a Promethium Cash to take one of these for the next game. Uh, and then if you want them again, you'd have to pay another Promethium Cash. So the good thing about this is it doesn't matter if they die in the game, because, you know, they were just hired, so you can just immediately hire another one. So they're kind of like just, you buy them in, they do some damage, you can go crazy with them, and then let them go. They're not as important as your regular guys. So, as you can see, if you're spending your Promethean Caches, then suddenly um, it's taking away from your pool of 15. But if you are getting like three or four Promethean Caches a turn, which can easily happen, um, I think it would easily uh, become <laughs> very quick. And, you know, I, I think even that 15 number then would be quite easy to get. Um, however, we haven't actually finished the campaign yet, so I can't say that for sure. But that's just my impressions. Um, yeah, the other thing you can do with Prometheum is you can spend one Prometheum to get a hundred credit, sorry, a hundred points to spend on top of a hundred points that you get for finishing a game anyway. So every time you finish a game, you get a hundred points. You can spend another one to get two hundred. Now, what I don't like about that is there's no tax like there used to be in Necron and Gorkamorka. So you had an income tax to kind of balance it out depending on the number of guys you had. It's a balancing mechanic. Um, in this, instead, you have you, do, you don't have any limit on that, but any credits you... Sorry, I keep saying credits. Any points you don't spend um, are wasted. So you're kind of forced to spend them all as soon as possible to get what you want. And that can be a little awkward. And uh, it's also kind of sad you don't have a stash where you could keep equipment you're not using. Um, you can't sell the equipment you're not using. You know, um, you can't keep those credits and save up for something really big. You know, that was always like a... A good mechanic in Necromunder is you had all these credits and you could spend them on cool stuff straight away, but you might want to save up for something really awesome. 
or you might want to actually just save them to cover any losses that happen later on. I mean, maybe you already have an awesome guy, but if they suddenly die, you've got no way to replace them. In this, it's actually very easy to replace them, because um, you could just hire a specialist that did the same job for one Promethean Barrel at a turn. So, yeah, it's but you can't save that money and get that person back, like, properly, so... It is a shame in that sense. I feel like you could just port the rules from Necromunda though across and that would work absolutely fine. So if you took the campaign rules from this, because you wanted something a bit more complicated, put it into Shadow War, it would work absolutely fine and I feel like that would be a lot, lot more fun. And that's probably what we're going to do uh, when we get a campaign going at the local club. So, uh, yeah, that is basically it for the thing. I mean, it's all the same otherwise. It's I've covered pretty much everything. You've got all the different faction kill teams in the back of this book, which is good. So you've got every faction in here, apart from demons, because they don't have a kill team, because sod you demons. Now, um, I don't know. Apparently it doesn't fit with the fluff or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, uh, Gene Steel Cults, that'd be quite nice. And there's your roster, which is much simplified over uh, the older ones. It's not quite as much room, but there's a handy little thing to miss next mission, that kind of thing, which they didn't used to have, so that's cool. Um, but yeah, that's that's it for the basic rules. Uh, the book itself, there's all the fluff on Armageddon, as usual, some nice pictures in here. They've got the wars of Armageddon, you've got all the history and stuff like that, warriors, blah, blah. Um, most of it's the same stuff you've read before. You've got Structure of High, which is literally lifted from the Necromunda book. There's quite a few things. There's the Necromunda picture, you know. Um, but it's, it's more or less the same stuff we've always seen, so, you know. Um, but yeah, it's a very good game. So if you have not played it before, or you want to get some friends into Necromunda and they, if you can't convince them to start Necromunda, um, Shadow was a good place to start because it's a little more simple, plus it's... Um, Watch you, is you can use your existing factions and you know you can get the rules for them for free and everything. So it's very good if you want to play something different, especially while we're waiting for 8th edition and it's a good holdover for that. Um, highly recommend it, lots of fun uh, involved in it and it's good value for a book actually and most of the games virtual books I obviously say aren't very good value. Um, this one is actually fairly decent value. If you paid the 20 quid for me, it's a decent chunk of Book, and it's got everything you need to play right in there. It's literally everything in one book, um, which is what you want. You know, you don't have to go through several different books to get what you need. Um, it's very good, and there's a nice reference section in the back. Uh, one little qualm I have with it is uh, it has a contents page, which isn't immediately at the front because you got all these. So you got your contents page. Oh, it is at the front. Sorry. Um, which is okay, but there's no index. Um, there's never a freaking index in these books. It's so annoying. Same with Necromunda, same with Gorkamorka, and especially on Gorkamorka and Necromunda, it was a nightmare to find specific rules. Um, so it's slightly better for that, slightly, but it's still annoying if you're trying to look up something specific. I don't know why they never put an index in these things. It would be so freaking helpful, but nope. Uh, they don't, so that's kind of annoying, and you may end up putting uh, little sticky tabs on every page you need that is relevant. Um, but you'll find yourself looking at this less and less uh, the more you play. So, yeah, uh, I would recommend it. Overall, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. Um, if you take this and apply the Necromunda campaign system to it instead, uh, that would definitely go up to an 8 or a 9, because that is really freaking fun. Um, but yeah, you get slightly less attached to your kill teams in this uh, than you did in Necromunda. They kind of became their own little guys, you know, with full of character and their own quirks and that kind of thing. Uh, same with Gork and Walker. Um, there was a lot more character involved in it because it was a longer system and there was more direct... Um, there's more things you could do with the specific models themselves. Uh, in this, it's like regular Space Marine Mook. Regular Space Marine Mook, regular Space Marine Mook, and they might have a couple of different weapons, but otherwise they're more or less the same, and it doesn't matter because they'll maybe like three or four games, possibly, 
that's it, you'll have finished the campaign, you know. So it'll probably take longer than that slightly, but it could happen depending on what what people do and what kind of rewards you get. So it could easily just end very quickly. Um, so that is it for my review on Shadow War Armageddon. Um, thank you very much for watching this video. I will be making another video immediately based on some sisters' tactics to use in this, uh, based on my Necromunda experience and everything else. Um, but yeah, that is basically it. So thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, remember to click like, and don't forget to comment below if you have any questions or anything to say or any feedback, any kind of, uh, of your own impressions on Shadow War Armageddon or Necromunda, etc. Um, leave them below, and if you have any questions, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I'm going on quite a lot here. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this and tactical videos in the near future. I will be back for 8th edition in a big way. I'm going to be covering everything I can and I'm going to be trying to be doing it quite regularly. So I will see you next time. Have fun.